The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Laurentino Cortizo Cohen, President of the Republic of Panama. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome His Excellency Laurentino Cortizo Cohen, President of the Republic of Panama, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Su Excelencia. Your Excellency, Mr. Dennis Francis, President of the 78th Session of the United Nations General Assembly. Your Excellency, Antonio Guterres, United Nations Secretary General, Heads of State and Government, Distinguished Delegates, I'm delighted to be here before you at this assembly that gathers, gathers us with a view to finding more effective ways of addressing the pressing problems of global society. The Republic of Panama, as a founding member of this organization, reiterates its firm commitment to the search for solutions based on dialogue and on mutual respect that contributes to the maintenance of international peace and security, which are essential for the development and well-being of humanity. Panama is the bridge of the world. It is a crossroads at the center of the Americas where all roads converge thanks to our exceptional air and maritime connectivity, which is the best in Latin America and the Caribbean. Furthermore, the Republic of Panama is committed to achieving the 2030 Agenda and its 17 Sustainable Development Goals and they are included within the government plan of my administration. Ladies and gentlemen, in the 50 months that we have been in office, our government has focused on public policies that allow us to address the huge challenge, laying the foundations to reduce poverty and inequality in order to provide the most disadvantaged populations an opportunity to achieve the social and economic conditions that enable them to leave, live decently. Making headway in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals is an inescapable responsibility that compels us to pay attention to the cause and effect relationship between them. We must ask ourselves, how does the climate crisis have an impact on the three first sustainable development goals? Can we really end poverty, achieve zero hunger and health and well-being in the midst of this serious drought that is afflicting the planet, as well as the floods and the devastating fires that are raising huge areas of land and the rise in sea levels. Let us think about the conclusions of the IPCC report that warns us of an escalation of changes to the climate system, unprecedented escalations that uh, are leading us to s extreme situations that have posed a grave threat to the survival of life on Earth. The climate crisis is a ticking time bomb, and time is running out for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, the commitment of Panama to human existence is something that has been shown and demonstrated with the decisions that we have made and the 
consequential actions that we have engaged in. We are a country with huge water resources. Our coasts are bathed by two huge oceans. And this makes us particularly aware of the importance of water for our population and for life on Earth. Panama has made extraordinary efforts to preserve our seas, achieving the goal of 30% protected nine years before 2030, and we have even increased it to 54% this year. Panama, and this is not rhetoric, but rather we have done this with fats with actions has become a blue leader and I can also tell you that Panama is one of the seven countries in the world that has been declared to be carbon negative. Ladies and gentlemen, in Panama we have established a carbon footprint reduction program with a national green hydrogen and derivatives strategy. Furthermore, since we have been in office in Panama, we have brought in an ambitious energy transition agenda with the goal being to find and to develop accessible energy that is not polluting in order to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by at least 24% for 2050. Panama is one of the 15 countries in the world that is most exposed to climate risks and natural risks. In fact, we have already seen in our country the first case of climate displacement when we had to relocate the population of the Karti Sugdup island due to rising sea levels. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to reaffirm on behalf of the Republic of Panama, that the Panamanian people successfully rose to the task of the Panama Canal operation in 1999, and we increased its capacity in 2016. I wish to express to the nations of the world that Panama is committed to continuing to operate the canal in a safe, efficient, reliable and competitive manner as we have done so far. And we have done this very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Panama, as a country that makes effective contributions to environmental protection, asks the most polluting countries here at this General Assembly to respect the commitments made to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We have all also seen on repeated occasions at the General Assembly and at the meetings of the Conference of the Parties, the COPs, the United Nations COPs, that countries commit to making changes that later are not delivered. Ladies and gentlemen, human development is the greatest priority and provides populations opportunities for a more decent life within their own countries. That way, they wouldn't have to abandon their countries and embark on irregular emigration, exposing themselves to human rights violations and often losing their own lives. In this regard, the problem of irregular migration must be addressed multilaterally, with a focus on the respect for human rights and under the principles of solidarity and shared responsibility, with the aspiration being to safeguard the integrity of human life in a safe and orderly manner. Panama is working actively 
in collaboration with several countries in the region to implement programs to improve care and protection for irregular migrants who enter our country over the border with Colombia, crossing the dangerous Darien jungle, which is the largest natural park in the whole of Central America. Ladies and gentlemen, our country is making colossal efforts to provide solidarity to these irregular migrants whose number is increasing every year and this is forcing Panama to allocate significant resources to humanitarian aid. This is an unsustainable situation, it's not something we asked for, it's inhumane and is a painful humanitarian tragedy. We are seeing suffering and death for thousands hundreds of thousands of migrants who are embarking on this uh, perilous journey. I wish to reiterate to you that this situation is not sustainable. It is a situation where, a situation that we are victim to and that we are not responsible for. I launch an appeal to the international community to address in its full magnitude the issue of irregular migration that today is not only concentrated in the Mediterranean, but rather it is a global issue. And the fact is that the Panamanian people currently are being directly affected by it. Ladies and gentlemen, today we reiterate the appeal for dialogue, for peace and for multilateralism. With respect for international law and for the principles that underpin it without anything that goes against the well-being of peoples. In many ways we are in a race against the clock for human survival and that is the raison d'etre of this organization that gathers us today and its actions largely depend on the steps that we take vis-a-vis -vis the future as a global community. Today, as the Panamanian Head of State, I wish to express to all of you that Panama wants for the whole world what we want for our own people. That is peace, well-being, justice and development. Thank you very much. Au nom de l'Assemblée Générale, on behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of Panama for the statement he just made, and I ask Protocol to please escort His Excellency.